よ。Hello, my gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful queen bees. It is your girl Amanda, the buzz artist. Welcome back to my channel, a place where you can let loose and just have fun with your art. So for today's video, I thought I would answer a question that I recently got the other day, and that relates to finding new ways to think and go outside the box with our art, and finding ways that we can try new things instead of doing the same thing with our art over and over and over again. So before we get into that, I just wanted to talk about the painting that we're doing here. So this painting is actually based on a royalty-free picture that I found on Pexels.com, and I decided to take a different approach than what I normally do here on this channel uh, with my artwork. One, because I wanted to illustrate the point of going out of your comfort zone, like we're talking about with this video, but two, I wanted to experiment with a more monotone color scheme and really challenge myself when it comes to painting a face. And something else I wanted to mention, if you really love my pop art and want to learn how to create your own, be sure to check out my online course, Turn Any Image Into Pop Art. This is a six day mini course that walks you through step by step through my process for breaking down an image, capturing likeness, and other techniques for turning any image into a gorgeous work of pop art that you can be proud of. And the best part is this course is free for all of my subscribers here on YouTube. So the link to check out the course and enroll is in the description below. Okay, now let's dive into the art of thinking outside the box with our art. So have you ever felt that you were only good at one thing with your art and felt incredibly hesitant to try anything new? You pine for a more out of the box creativity, but you find yourself stuck in a spiraling circle of fear and uncertainty. And you think to yourself, what if I mess up? What if I fail? I just gathered enough courage to make something I like. Will I be able to handle more self-criticism if I try something new? If you are an artist or a creative, you probably have experienced the classic reluctance for change and trying, to, and trying new things with your art. And let me preface this by saying, you are definitely not alone. Plenty of artists find themselves in this sort of creative rut, where they only create one thing they know they're good at and find little to no impetus to creatively explore anything different. And I, I gotta say this too, change is hard, especially when we know we are really good at something and don't want to veer out of our lanes. But as much of that upside is nice to us, it also has its major faults. If we don't adapt and try new art styles, we stagnate and begin to lose our creative edge. And the way to light a fire under our butts is first to check in with ourselves and understand why we feel the way we do. So tap into your why for being hesitant. As silly as this sounds, a big part of art is overcoming the mental barriers we place on ourselves in the creation process. The sooner we can understand why we feel the way we do, the sooner we can move on. This exercise might be a bit raw for you, but will really allow yourself to be very honest. Why are you afraid to create something different? Are you fearful that trying something new will lead to failure? or that you hate feeling out of place and uncertain when it comes to creating something. Really dig deep with your emotional triggers and try to get to the root of why you feel so fearful. Understanding that can help you wipe out the excuses you mentally place on yourself and begin the healing process of moving forward. Once you've done that, tap into your why for creating art. So once you've dug deep and destroyed all your boxes of tissues from all your breakthroughs, think about why you love making art. What compels you to want to create art in the first place? Does it relax you? Does it help you be a better person? Understanding your why is crucial because it constantly reminds us to feed our emotional and creative souls. Knowing what it wants helps us make the hard changes that we need to make. When thinking about your why, really take the time to explore. Everyone has a different reason for doing what they do, and it always, always, always comes from an emotional place. In fact, my tip for you is to ask yourself why five times until you really hit a deep human need. For example, my why for creating art is to leave a lasting impression on the world so that I feel I made a difference. This mission keeps me fired up day after day, and in a way, forces me to be creative and to constantly try new things. So once you've found your why, write it down on a notepad or sticky note, and make sure you place that note somewhere you can see it every day, so it serves as a constant reminder to you. So now that we've kind of uncovered our deep psychological barriers, as well as the impetus to do what we want to do, how does one actually think outside the box? 
The very subject of creative thinking is very, very fascinating to me, partly because I myself am a huge process improvement nerd, but also because creative thinking is the birthplace of unique thought and innovation. If you recall from my previous video, Why Art is Important, I touched on how art is the pulse of society, a tool for constantly interpreting the world around us and creating quiet revolutions that in turn help shape society. This is done with the power of creative thinking. How does one think creatively? Well, creative thinking actually requires a set of factors to ensure its success in our lives, and the two most important being the following. One, creating a safe, open-minded environment mindset, and two, learning the rules and then breaking them. When these two factors are in play, the field of open creative thinking is born, and we become more free to explore and make changes. Now that we know about the foundation of creative thinking, we can also apply this to the world of art with just four steps. So step one, allow yourself the freedom to brainstorm. This is definitely a mindset exercise and a necessary one at that. Think about it. If you don't allow yourself the freedom to explore new ideas without constant criticism, you are severely limiting yourself and your imagination to take over. Experienced artists understand the importance of free thought and how even the most ridiculous ideas can be somehow applied to their work. How do you think the iPhone was born? The concept of a supercomputer you can carry in your pocket was nuts back before the age of smartphones, but Steve Jobs, the creator of Apple, found the most innovation in his engineers when he challenged them to accept that no idea was a bad idea in the initial creation process. It was a super ridiculous, nay, laughable notion that a portable small computer was somehow achievable. And as crazy as it sounded, it worked, and Apple cornered the market as a titan of tech innovation as a result of this. The same applies to us as artists. Keep an open mind, look at every idea that pops in your head as viable, and do not immediately dismiss it because it sounds too silly. From one idea, another idea can be born. Now step two, define your art process and replace one aspect with something different. I like to call this Art Mad Libs. Do you remember that game? Where you would replace one word in a sensible process or sentence with something different, silly, or unique? Well, you would pretty much do that with your art. So how would that work? A great way to really push the bounds on your skills and comfort zone is to first define your process steps when making art and understand the rules you place on yourself when in the creation process. And once you got something down, think about replacing one step in the process or tool with something else. For example, my process for creating my pop art goes something like this. Collect my brushes, acrylic paint, water, and canvas, and my canvas paper. Choose my model topic, and let's say I chose a girl with glasses. Now, it's time to play Mad Libs. I choose one item in my process and replace it with something else. For example, I want to replace brushes with finger painting, replace acrylic paint with condiments, replace the girl's face with an elephant, replace the girl's glasses with a comb. You getting my point? Once you have a slew of ideas, you can then proceed to step three, which is pull the threads and keep discovering. From here, you can really go to town if you choose to go further. For example, if I am really liking the idea of replacing the girl's face with an elephant face wearing glasses, I can either paint that or keep idea generating. An elephant face holding a melting popsicle trying to feed a mouse. It's strange, it's funny, and totally an original idea you never would have thought to do otherwise. Plus, this is a great example of how one crazy silly idea helped beget another. And then step four, assess your ideas and pare down. So you got a whole slew of great ideas. You may start having trouble stopping all those great ideas at this point, which is good. And don't forget to write them all down for future reference. But now it's time to put back on your critical hat and assess what we would like to actually do for a painting and drawing. It's okay at this point to be critical because you already poured out a ton of ideas and now need the analytical mind to pare down and realistically choose what is feasible for you to make. Once you have your idea picked, you are now ready to rock and roll. So you got your idea, now go. When it comes to the actual process of painting and drawing, if you're still feeling a bit nervous, you may want to start small. And that is okay. Start small. Experiment. You don't have to make a huge painting or do stuff on a canvas if you're not quite ready for it yet. If you don't want to use expensive materials, use cheaper materials. For example, I like to play around with multimedia paper when trying out a new technique. I don't know why, but using multimedia paper just takes out all of the pressure of having to make something perfect all the time. 
do this multiple times, and then move on to something bigger, like a canvas or a larger surface, and practice again. If you all wanna learn how to be and stay motivated when it comes to creating art, I actually created a video for that. You can find that in the video description or up in the card up above here. So be sure to check that out. So whatever you do, don't stop being silly in your creation process and make notes of what you like and don't like. This whole art creation process is your experiment time. Take advantage of it. Plus, you just never know. You might invent a whole new technique you never thought you would like. So these are my tips on how you can be a better creative thinker and thinking outside the box. So what did you think of my tips, my queen bees? How do you think outside the box and get out of your own creative slumps? Comment below and let me know. I always look forward to hearing from you, my gorgeous, darling, beautiful queen bees. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed this, please, please, please be sure to give this video a like and to subscribe to my channel, hit that like button. You know what to do so that you can see more fun art related content from me to you in the future. All right, my queen bees, remember to love yourselves and always have fun with your art. See you all next time. Bye.